So what what do you believe a role of an artist is? Um, I used to know a nice quote about that, but I can't for the life of me remember. It's it's just to um, I think to think in a different way. I think. What do you mean in a different way? Well, uh, the way you think visually is different to the way you read a book, for instance. Right. Different part of your brain. Mm. And I think it's important that we use all our brain, not just one side of it. Just one part. Yeah. Okay. Um, how would you say your work has evolved? Oh, right. Well, I started off as an abstract artist, severely abstract. Mm. And it's got more and more figurative as I've got older. Oh, so I've it's evolved into it. figurativeness. Yeah, yeah. Now, it, now I, I um, you know, you can see what my paintings are about. You couldn't mm. before. What were your experiences as a teacher, teaching children um, art? What did you take from it? Oh, it's very good. Very good indeed. I, I enjoyed it. Enormously, I, I really like teaching children. Um, it was it, as I say, because it, I always think it's about thinking. It's not really about producing beautiful pictures. It's about the way of thinking. Mm. And I thought it was very important for children's education. They don't think they get so much, so many hours now. Mm. I think it's been cut back the hours. The same thing for music and dance. All of the arts are the same. Different ways of thinking. And I think we're, you know, if we're just thinking um, very narrow concepts, it's not good. But I enjoyed teaching very much, yeah. What, um, what, what, what do you find inspirational? Oh. Well, usually most artists have got a whole sort of set of things that, you know, give you that extra lift. Um, a lot of very sort of ancient things I mm. find inspirational. When I say ancient, I mean prehistoric. Right, right. Like right. stones, mm. like great standing stones and so on. Stonehenge, um, etc. A whole lot of these things, you know, you, there are things that you think you've finished painting them and then you come back to them. It's cyclical, really. Oh, well, no, no. Well, most artists are the same. There's a small thing, you think, oh, there's that. Looking through doors goes to something else mm. is a thing that I keep repeating over and over. Not intentionally, it just is, you know, part. Mm. Colour is very important to me. Um, I mean, flowers are important and, and growing things, you mm. know, animals and growing things are important. Um, yeah, a, a range of things that, you know, you gradually learn, give you a lift, mm. something special when you look at them. Ah, yeah. Um, what do you hope to achieve in the next year? Um, another 50 paintings, I think. Another 50? <laughs> <laughs> I do about 50 paintings a year. Oh, do you? That's remarkable. Small. Uh, sometimes it, if I'm in a good uh, strain, more, but mostly. Oh, so 50, and do you plan this 50 before you do it, or are no, they just no, random? Just, no, they, they just come, you know. From your spirit? Yes, yeah. sometimes I don't get to that. If there's a big, a lot of things going on that year that mm -hmm. cuts my time down, I don't you achieve don't. 50, mm -hmm. but mostly I achieve about 50. And do you sell them? Yes, mostly? yes, yeah. Mostly on the art trail now. The art trail. I don't do. I used to do quite a lot of exhibiting in galleries and things in different parts of the country. But now I'm older, it's not worth it. You know, I've got to get my stuff there and mm -hmm. pick it up, bring it back. Um, it's too, too much. So Explain I, a bit about how you got involved at art trail. What do you do exactly with the E17 art trail? Oh, I was, I was. Um, there used to be a festival. Right. in the village at one time. In the summer or winter? Uh, yeah, it was in the summer. Mm. Um, it was. It started out as an arts festival with right. music and right. things like that. Mm. And um, the, the, the man that ran it said, 
we haven't got any pictures, would you put on an exhibition? Because my house converts oh, into mm, a shop. Yeah. So I said, yeah, I'll do that. That was 26 years ago, and I've done it ever since. It but used to be a group of us used to do it, but gradually they've moved away or, you know, moved out the country. And um, so when the art trail started, mm. of course, I went in with them, and uh, so I've been doing it ever since. You know. oh. The art trail is about 10 years old now, I think. It's very good, very good indeed. That's grassroots. The artists it's, it's, set it's, it up. It's good for artists. Oh, yeah, excellent. Mm. I mean, and it, it's good for the community as well because mm. it's really exciting when that's on. It's on. You know, people do all sorts of things, strange things, you know, like putting art on trees and you can take it for free. Mm. Okay. If, if you were, um, sorry, if you were stuck on a desert island, right. <laughs> <laughs> this takes a lot. If you're stuck on a desert island, what three things you take with you and what music would you take with you? Ah. Uh, yeah, um, well, I'd, I'd hope to take my painting materials and a, a something, paper probably, um, something to make paintings with anyway. Mm -hmm. um, how many am I allowed? Three. Oh, just three? Mm -hmm. oh. Well, I could make brushes. Um, you can make brushes? Yeah, everybody oh. can. We made them at school on one occasion. We made our own brushes. Oh. Um, I think a pair of scissors might, or a knife might be very useful on a day. Yeah, to chop off the coconut trees. Yeah, and stuff. absolutely. Um, what else would I? Well, I suppose you could use shells or something for cutting, couldn't you? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Music. It, probably Beethoven's symphonies. Yeah. That's what you take with you? I think so. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what do you love um, about being a painter? The one thing you love about being a painter? Well, just actually uh, doing it, I think. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. that sounds silly, but, you know, the actual physical making of things. Mm. I like I'm, I like crafts as well. I do a lot of crafts. Yeah, because I can make, see Making the, things, really. Making yeah. things. In your opinion, what separates good art from a great art? What separates good art from a great art, you know, like... Oh, I don't know. That's a deep question, isn't huh? it? <laughs> Very deep. What, what art have you seen in your lifetime that you thought, this is a great art? A you, lot. A lot. A lot. Name one of your favourites. Well, I mean, there's a great artist, obviously, like Da Vinci and all of these people. Mm. But uh, there's a, a great many artists that do very great mm -hmm. work. Uh, you mentioned Chagall. Mm -hmm. before. Yeah, Mark Chagall. Yeah. Um, the exhibition that he had in the Royal Academy, mm. one of the few exhibitions that I've ever been where I was I was actually crying at the end of it. Really? I don't normally you moved you that much? Have moved as much as that, but that that was. Mm. And another one, the other one, there was only two. The other one was a, a young lady. I say young lady. She's not so young now. She's in a wheelchair, and What's she did she, somebody who lives locally, and she uh, did some beautiful drawings of, of uh, in a hospital where children were born prematurely. She had a, what they called a residency as an artist, and that was the same, you know, it really moved me. So those two, so you don't have to be somebody well known, mm. there's some great art mm. produced by many artists, mm -hmm. really. I don't think it's, I don't think it's special, you see, I think most people can do something really very well, mm -hmm. and uh, you can learn to do things. Mm. Whether you're going to be a great artist, I don't know. That's something to do with <coughs> your character and your being and your experience, I think. It's not your skill, necessarily. Mm. But, um, is that good enough? Yeah. <laughs> Would you be visiting any gallery shows this year? No, no, I won't. You wouldn't? No. No, I don't really get round to any of them in the town because of, you know, the difficulties of walking. Oh, okay. I do understand. Yeah. Um, 
the statement, art influences social and culture change and how we live. Do you think this is true? Yes, I think it, it influences cultural change. I mean, one of my great heroes is William Morris. Oh, I love William Morris. Okay. See, it, and I don't particularly care for his work. No? But as a person, he really? was an, a miraculous person. And In what way, explain? Well, because he had all sorts of ideas which mm. he managed to, you know, influence Absolutely. not only art but all sorts of things socially. Mm. I mean, he stood on a soapbox for years shouting, you know, about sort of improving your life mm. through art, really. Mm. So, I mean, yes, I, I think it can. How often and how much it does it, I don't know. Um, mm. But certainly some people have managed to change things through art, the arts. Through, yeah. That's true. Do you mind telling us what year you were born? 1935. That was a good year. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't, actually. <laughs> Which part of London were you born? I was born in East London. I'm, as I say, a Cockney. I was born within the sound of Bow Bells. I was born in Mile End, oh. which is a mile from the church. There. And you grew up there all the time? Or no, I didn't. Do? I was uh, five when the war came and we were bombed. So you were taken bombed, to the country um, as well? There was something like 35 bombs dropped in the area where I lived. Oh. So it was, it was devastated. Mm. It was... Um, you know, just empty the streets. It looked, you know, just the houses were all pulled down. It's now on Mile End Park. Yeah, I've been there, yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Oh, Mile End Park. Just opposite. At least it brought some happiness. <laughs> well, my father always used to say that the best thing that Hitler ever did was to bomb London to get rid of the slums. Oh, he said that? Mm. Oh, that's quite I powerful. I mean, they were, they were a dreadful times. So they really were, you know. Hmm. I mean, before the war, they were very bad. Sorry, I have to ask you again about your co your school that you went to. What school did you train to be an artist? I mean, well, um, sort of. Well, again, see, I, I did a lot of courses before I went to teacher training mm -hmm. college. The teacher training college, I was at um, a Barnet uh, up there. No, I meant to do with your art, you know, like to art school, what art schools did you Because what's your greatest challenge as well, an art school that you face? Um, the, the, uh, East Ham um, College of Art. Yeah. Well, they're pretty much um, the same that I've all that any artist and everybody faces really. Question of working with colour, uh, working with line, mm -hmm. working with shapes mm -hmm. uh, to get your ideas over. Mm -hmm. Really, all of the, it doesn't. I mean, it doesn't even get easier you, because you know more. And it becomes more and more difficult as you get older. Because you know more and more and more. What um what woman inspires you? Woman. Um, well, there's quite a lot of artists, woman artists. But it, it doesn't uh, have to be an artist. It could be a politician. Anyone. A woman that you no. look at. This woman inspires me. Yeah, I can't say that there was any particular person. Right. Um, I mean most. Most women of a certain generation were inspirational because they had a very difficult life, I think. Mm. Um, what, what do you think of the artist? I don't know if you like her work, but I have a feeling you might. Louise Bourgeois? Yes, I mean, she's a great artist. I thought you she? might like yes, her. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, There's something about you like her, because mm. I've watched a lot of films mm. on her. Um, it's, it's quite a lot, you know, but... Women have, have had um, very uh, very difficult lives, and if they've become anything in their lives, it's, it's been a tremendous struggle, mm -hmm. you know, like your mother's mm -hmm. generation yeah. and uh, her mother's generation. And my generation. <laughs> well, your generation too, but the others, they really did have a ter terrible struggle. Right. Because they've got to broke through all the social norms, you mm -hmm. see. So if they wanted to study or anything, it was very, very difficult. Yeah, because they were looked as rebellious women. Yes, and, and you were going against, you were going against the whole of your, 
your friends yeah because you were supposed to be your um, family you're supposed to be strong to enable and pregnant cleaning the house and cooking yes yes and, and and it was as i say you have great admiration for your female forebears that's what i think so there isn't them. one great woman that you could pull as a she no, inspires me no no i don't think mm. so okay. uh, there's been so many you know really yeah. in different fields you know what's your favorite perfume Perfume. Mm. Um, I do like lavender. I use it quite oh, a lot. Oh, lavender. lavender. Yeah. yeah. Old it's fashioned. romantic. Lavender is supposed to be romantic, isn't it? I don't know. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> I do. I do like lavender, but um, you do like lavender. Yeah. So what, it's. Uh, uh, what do you do to keep fit? I don't know. Don't do any. I do a few exercises in the morning. <laughs> You know, to get my knees working, basically. <laughs> <laughs> to start the engine. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've not been a great one for exercises, I'm afraid. Name some of your favourite book and a movie that you like. Oh, I can't. I couldn't possibly. <laughs> I couldn't possibly. You don't, there's I've not got one a house full of books. And I've, I've read, right, since I was about eight or nine, I've read a book a day. Wow. Have you? Mm. So You're over intelligent. <laughs> No, it's not. I mean, it's just, they're not wonderfully. They're all sorts of books, fiction, mostly. Uh, so, who's your one of your favourite writers? Like, well, I mean, I'd, I really wouldn't like to say. I mean, you know, they come and You'd be go. betraying your books. <laughs> You'd be betraying your books. At the you moment, think. it's Gillian Bradshaw, who I only discovered about six months ago. You know, she what did she write? I don't know. Uh, uh, fiction, historical fiction, and mm. so on. But, I mean, next week it'll be somebody else, you know. Because, oh. I mean, be, I've, as I say, I've always written myself, so, I mean... Oh, do you? You oh, write? Yeah, yeah I, I wrote, I've written about ten books. I'm writing the... You've got them published? Part. Yes, yes, they were published. Oh, I like to read some of them. Huh? What? Do you sell them in your shop, Paul? I do sell them, yeah. And I sell them on. online now, but... Oh, uh, do you? You should yeah. give me the site where you sell them. Um... Yeah, I will. Okay. Uh, yeah.